Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Cut yeah. always. Mike LV. I done wasted enough of my time. I'ma need that back. Yeah, time after time with the I've been roll out a line like I don't read the signs. I'm so done with the lies. That's why I ain't got no time. Hey guys, my name is Paul Matthew and today we're going to be talking about lighting music videos. Coming up. So I'm a little bit lazy today. I'm just setting up one light instead of my normal setup, which is ironic because I'm talking about lighting music videos today. But I put all my energy into that and I don't feel like setting it all up today for this. But what we're going to be covering is some... Uh, First, I'm going to start off with some of the fundamentals and some basic stuff, and we'll be talking about some more advanced tips and tricks to really enhance your music videos using light. The first thing I want to talk about is three-point lighting. So if you don't know what three-point lighting is, it is the kind of the fundamental um, concept for lighting a video. So you're going to have your key light. Now that is your main light. In this case, with this video, I have a light serving as my key light right here. and then you have your fill light. So the fill light is gonna fill in the shadows on your face. So if you want more contrasty looking image, you're gonna have less fill light. If you want more high key, where it's everything looks more evenly lit, then your fill light's gonna be brighter and your shadows are gonna be less noticeable. Uh, in this case, I kind of have a fill light. I just have my laptop up and that kind of is filling in my shadows. Uh, the last thing is a backlight. So. Right here, we've got just a practical lamp, and that is my backlight. So in a lot of like interview style videos and stuff, you'll often have your backlight behind the person, the subject, um, pointing down and creating basically a little hair light. What this does is it helps create separation from uh, between the subject and the background. So now in the music video that we just showed in the beginning, the backlight are the two red tube lights in the background and tube lights are a very commonly used light uh, in music video situations. They're very versatile, they're very stylized. Um, these are RGB ones so I can change the color. My key light in the music video was a big blue um, softbox light. And we'll talk about soft and hard light in a second here. And then the key light was just really a reflector and that was bouncing some of that light back in. I didn't have much of a fill light because I wanted a very contrasty looking image. And with the backlight kind of facing towards the camera that helped fill in some of those shadows uh, anyways. So what is soft? and hard light. So uh, that giant softbox is basically making the light softer. It's diffusing the light. Uh, if I were to take that diffuser off, then I would have a much harder light. So that's going to be in your shadows. It's how stark and crisp those shadows are going to be. For portraits and faces, a soft light is going to make it look more appealing and for something more gritty and dramatic. That's where your hard light is going to create those more defined cheekbones and all that drama that you want to see. So it's just depending on what you're going for uh, determines how soft or hard you want your light in your scene. Another way to make your images stand out is contrasting colors. So we've got in this example blue and red and you can do whatever color scheme you want. These are uh, generally you want to do like opposite colors because that's going to create the biggest contrast like um, teal and orange is common in movies because A, it, it's common color, your skin is orange-ish and the sky is blue so it creates a more natural looking um, color contrast that you're going to find in most scenes. So with this, uh, the blue really helps the subject s just pop off that red background so you're not losing uh, focus on what you want to see. So. The color contrast is really gonna help make your image look better with lighting. Now you can also choose what colors you want um, to, to set the kind of mood that you're going for. And there's a whole bunch of things that go into color theory and the emotions, um, not gonna get into all of that. That's a big topic in itself. Now, 
the most important thing about lighting is not lighting shadows the light that you're not casting um shadows are really what brings it all together um and now just like a tip uh, for shooting a music video or really any video is you want to shoot to the shadow side. So if you can, it's better to shoot that way. It helps create definition and contrast um, and add just depth to your image. So if I had a light over here like I do, I would want to shoot on the side that has the shadows, not the side that's lit. And I dare you to go through any movie and pay attention to what side of the face they're shooting. It's probably gonna be on the darker shadowy side. If there's someone sitting by a window, they're shooting the side inside where there's less light and not shooting from where the window would be. So in if you wanna create atmosphere and even more depth to your image, using haze is a phenomenal way to, to create that atmosphere. And it's so great with lighting because that allows you now to see the light rays. And uh, especially in like some of those shots, you can see the shadows as he's moving his arms and then the light, how it's piercing through. It just creates so much more depth to your image. Now there is a difference between fog and haze. So a fog machine is gonna look more like smoke so a bellowing fire and i think a common mistake people do is they see these music videos or other projects and uh, they can tell that there's this fog in the shot and so they go out and buy this 40 dollars fog machine expecting to get those results now you can but you're gonna have to air it out and probably fan it and thin it out but you're really gonna get this um bellowing smoke effect which is also cool and can be used in, in certain contexts as well. But generally what you're seeing in these projects is haze. And you have to have a specific machine for haze, a haze machine. It is different from a fog machine. That is something I didn't know until I started looking into this stuff. Now, another really neat tool that you can get that's really gonna help, it's called a ProMist filter. So what that does is it blooms your highlights. Now, if you have this, um, if you look at cameras with a low dynamic range, which means they can't see the same range um, between their lights and your darks. So that's a that's a sign of a cheaper camera. When you see like someone filming and the sky is completely white, it's blown out because it doesn't have the dynamic range to see both the shadows and the, the foreground of what you're seeing and be able to expose the sky at the same time. You have to get a pretty expensive camera in order to get that dynamic range. And even the top cinema cameras won't have as much dynamic range as your eyes and that but the closer you get there, that's the, the more realistic image you're going to see. It's because you're now seeing something closer to what your eyes are going to see. So something you can do to compensate um, with a low dynamic range is getting a ProMist filter and that blooms the highlights. So there's not this harsh line of lighting where it's blown out and not blown out. It gives just a little bit of a haze and that um, mimics more of a filmic style. It doesn't look like it's just completely blown out. It just looks bright and bloomed out. Now in post, you can get overlays, light flare overlays, add a little bit more texture and give, uh, give that extra polish that your camera is not getting with those flares. So um, there's plenty of free resources. I really like Lens Distortions, link in the description. They're, they have a nice, well curated library. I'm not sponsored, I just like their content. They're a little pricier, but I use their, their content all the time. And you can see a lot of their light leaks in this video um, as I motivate it from the light flares of the natural light, well not natural, but the, the lighting in the video and then placing them to look like they're flaring in the, the lens. All right, so here's the last pro tip I wanna give you. There is um, two scenes going on in here. We only had two setups. So we had one where we had this high color contrast between the red and the blue, and then we set it up where there's just a big bright backlight and then a couple key lights to, um, to help not completely make him a shadow. Now with this setup, we made all the lights just plain white. 
and that basically gave us a blank canvas to work with in post. Uh, what you can now do with a setup like that, as you can see there, it looks like there's all these different colors going on and that's all post because I'm not fighting any sort of um, white balance issue or any other lights going on. I'm not work, I'm not fighting these other colored lights. So I can go in and change the hue of the highlights in the video, creating the effect or illusion that I had these all these gelled lights and that I'm cutting between. But in reality, it's just one white light that I've color corrected to look like, or color graded, I should say, to look like different colored lights. You can take this a step further, change your shadows um, hue to a different contrasting color and your highlights to the opposite. And that's gonna create some um, more color contrast in your image that you didn't have to practically do on set. So I recommend setting up some sort of blank canvas type lighting setup that you can then easily change the colors in post. Okay, that's gonna be it for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of setting up and lighting a music video. Uh, every week I'm gonna be coming up with content like this to help you guys become better filmmakers. And uh, if that's something you're into, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, like the video, it really helps me out and helps me keep producing more content like this for you. All right, see you guys next week.